Hi guys and welcome to a new section where we are going to start to build some applications. Uh, we are going in this section we are going to uh, look at how we can build desktop applications and we will um, start off by building a game, a tic-tac-toe game and uh, see how we build the logic how we build the data layers and how we build at the end we build the uh, gui interface as graphical user interface for that same application and we'll do that step by step so when talking about uh, building desktop application with python python is a general purpose programming language that means it can be used for many different types of programs you have already seen how it can be used as a scripting, scripting language to glue applications together as well as its use in managing data persistence and access. Uh, in this section we'll now look at how it can be used to build complete desktop, desktop applications. Desktop applications are the mainstay of personal computing. They include such standard facilities as word processing programs, spreadsheets, and even games. They often function entirely on the desktop with no network access required. At other times, they may be inherently network oriented, as is the case with a web browser or a client, client server database application. This, this, the distinguishing feature is that the bulk of the functionality is executed on the local PC and desktop applications can have a graphical user interface or GUI or a command line info interface which is called CLI and in this lesson we will see how an application can be structured in such a way that different user interfaces can be created on top of the same underlying program logic this means that we start off with a simple text interface and then add a graphical front end on top of the existing code. This idea can be taken even further and a web user interface can often be added to making your desktop application into a network application. And we can see that in the next section. Uh, we start off by looking at the basic structure or architecture of an application. We then build a simple command line application that is then extended using some Python modules to provide a much richer user experience. And we then move on to build a GUI frontend using Python standard GUI toolkit, which is called Takeinter. This on incorporates all the standard GUI features such as controls, menus, and dialogues. We then incorporate extra GUI features and enha enhance the appearance of the interface using the using more Python module magic. And next, we take a look at other GUI frameworks that offer even more powerful capabilities. Finally, we look how to support local configuration. So let's now start off by <coughs> talking about when planning an application and structuring your application. The key to building effective extensible applications is to apply a layered architecture the most common approach is to split the application into three layers. The user interface, the core logic, also known as, known as the business logic, and the data. There may, be, there may also be a network layer when the application uses the network extensively. One note is that there is a more formal version of this multi-layer architecture known as client-server computing. In the client server module, a strict hierarchy of request response operation is maintained. Each layer is a client of the layer below and makes requests that receive responses. The lower layers are servers to the layers above. The core logic layer acts as both a server to the user interface layer and the client of the layer data layer. 
true client server design is beyond the scope of this course, but the multi-layer approach demonstrator incorporates many of the same concepts. The user interface should uh, present the application logic to the user, but not implement that log logic. Its role it is to make navigation of the application's features as simple as possible and to display results or outcomes as clearly as possible. The user interface controls which functions are available at any point in time. For example, it should not be possible to close a document if no document is open. If using an object-oriented program, OOP, the objects will typically represent things like menus, buttons, and windows. The user interface accesses the core logic by calling functions or methods provided by the logic layer. The core logic layer contains all of the algorithms and state management of the data. This is where you write the code that changes the data values, create new entities, opens and closes files, and so on. The aim here is to provide a set of functions or services that can be accessed from the user interface. For this to be effective, the core logic functions should not print results, but should return them as values, that is, strings, numbers, lists, objects, and so on, that the user interface can present in the appropriate place and format. The core logic only presents the information it does not concern itself with how the information is displayed. It is this separation of concerns between logic and display that enables you to build different user interfaces on top of the same core logic. The core logic operates on, operates on data provided by the data layer. If using object-oriented programming, the objects will represent the com conceptual entities of the problem such as bank accounts, people, network messages, and locations, and so on. The data layer manages data. It stores the data in a safe place and retrieves it on demand. It should not contain sophisticated algorithms or logic specified to the application. It simply delivers raw data to the core logic layer for processing. The data layer may include some basic data integrity processing to ensure consistency of the data. It may also incorporate security features such as password control or encryption. It should expose the data via a set of objects, functions, or services. If using object-oriented programming, you, your objects will typically represent queries, tables, data connections, and so on. Ideally, Ideally, you should be able to build multiple applications using the same basic data services. The data layer was discussed in more detail in section 3, in the managing data section. One note is that there are many ways to represent the software design, and many books have been written on the subject. Nowadays, most of the industry uses a notation called the Unified Modeling Language, or UML for short. Essentially, this is a graphical representation of classes and their structure, as well as the corresponding objects and their in interactions. UML is a formally defined design language that in its pure form can result in automated code generation. It consists of many diagrams and associated icons for small projects such as the ones in this uh, course, UML is an unnecessary overhead, but if you ever work on larger projects and need a way to record and share the structure of your program, then you should research UML. The interaction between the user interface, logic, and data layers is often designed using a pattern called Model View Controller, or MVC for short. In general, the model represents the core logic and data layers, while the view represents the display elements in the user interface. 
and the controller represents the interaction and dependencies between those display elements. You use a simplified version of the MVC pattern in this lesson for the GUI design. And a little background on the MVC model. That it, it is that the MVC model, model was originally developed at Xerox Park as a part of the Smalltalk 80 Pro programming environment. Over the years, MVC has been adopted by many different languages and UI frameworks, and in the process has diverged significantly from the Smalltalk original. However, the core ideas remain the same. Separation of data model from the presentation, view, and interaction the controller. So now let's start to build our our uh, command line interface or for our game. So in this section we build a very simple command line interface application for the well-known game tic-tac-toe. The principle discussed in the earlier sections are applied but in a very simple form so that we can focus on the program structure rather than detail of what the code is doing. The code is available as a download as a pack uh, zip file or R RAR file uh, at the at the in, at the first video section of this section. So you can download the the zip file and unpack it uh, wherever you like. And just remember to copy the the files that I'm mentioning into the current working directory so that you can get it to work. So building the data layer, we start off by creating this game by designing the data layer. For this game, we uh, need only a simple text file to hold the state of the game so that it can be saved or resumed. A tic-tac-toe game consists of a board with nine squares. Each square can be empty or have the letter X or O in it. You can represent those three options with a simple list of characters. For storage, you convert that list into a simple character string. The only other piece of data needed is which player is due to move next, but in a computer versus human game, you can assume that the human is always next to go. So our data layer interfaces consists of only two exposed or published methods. And those methods will be, I'll just 